Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today let's talk about a topic that I have mentioned in my last few videos that I'm going to make. It has to do with bringing your own money from India to United States. So it could be in terms of inheritance or your own money that you have saved or uh, you have accumulated in India before moving to the United States. How do you bring it over to US? So if you're interested in this topic, watch this video until the end and let's get started. Now again, this is not a finance advice as well. This is just some information that I am gathering for myself as well. This is just some general information that a lot of Indian people would be interested in. So what is this? So say for instance, you came to the United States after spending some of your career in India. So now you may have accumulated some wealth or you may have uh, purchased some land or plot or apartment or whatever it may be, some property in India. Now, after spending a lot of time in US, you got your green card citizenship or whatever, or you just want to sell off your property in India and bring it back. Or you could also have inherited uh, some property or some money from your parents or some, some of your close relatives. And now it's in your name, but you need to transfer it to US. So what are the options? Now, now you have to be very careful with the laws on both sides of the border. So laws of India and over here once you bring once you complete the transaction what needs to be done in the united states you need to be aware of that otherwise you can land up in the hot water and that's not what you want to do now let's first categorize some different types of funds transfer from india to united states now say for instance you have some petty cash or some payment that you need to transfer from us to india uh, india to us now the quickest way is to go through the western union which allows you to transfer funds from uh, India to US or vice versa for that matter uh, directly from one bank account to another bank account or you could actually make a payment with your credit card or with your bank transfer or something like that to Western Union and they charge some fee on top of it in addition to the conversion rate and then they give you your money uh, in your bank account in your uh, in the United States so that's kind of typical but it can be very costly if the sum or uh, if you are transaction amount is large might cost you a lot of money now there is something called liberalized remittance scheme now through this scheme you are allowed to transfer funds from uh, india to the united states up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year now this could be from parents to their sons or daughters in the us who are studying for their fees and accommodation and things like that so that is one now one thing about the lrs uh, uh, this LRA scheme is that you have to transfer your own funds. It cannot be like you borrowed money from your uh, friend or family or something like that. Or the parents can send their money to sons or daughters who are studying in the United States. That's allowed. But otherwise, it should be from a remitter's own funds from, uh, from India to the United States. Now, let's talk about the big question how to transfer your own money or inheritance. So what is the logistics? What, what are the things that you need to do in order to do this transaction? Now, from the NRI perspective, there is a different limit. If you have a property that you sold, if you have your own money sitting in a bank in, in, in India, or if you have an inheritance, there is a limit of $1 million to bring in from your own account from India to the United States. Remember, this is $1 million per calendar year. Now this limit can be increased, but you have to make a specific request to RBI, Reserve Bank of India, 
to repatriate more money from your own account to the United States. So this is specifically for NRIs who can uh, who can do uh, at least a million dollars per year per calendar year and if needed more you have to make a request based on some uh, needed criteria. Now make sure one thing that you don't do is do some kind of a hawala kind of transaction that is purely illegal. So if you want to follow the right approach here are the steps that you need to do. Now typically let's start with a typical scenario selling your own property. Now you can sell your own property like house or your non-agricultural land or things like that to anybody in India and you can gain that capital capital gain. Now one caveat here is if it's agricultural land you need to sell it only to an Indian citizen so that is by law. Now technically NRIs are allowed to bring money back from a sale of two residential um, investments. So basically if you have two flats or two houses you can bring that money back to the United States. This is for NRIs. Now remember once you sell your house in India or your flat or your property in India you need to transfer that money into an NRO account that is where you transact as an NRI into an Indian banking system. So that is where you, the money that you obtained from the sale of a transaction of your uh, of your residence will, should reside in an NRO account. Now if you had purchased this property for more than three years, so say for instance you uh, purchased this property like 10 years back or 15 years back, there is a long term, there is a long -term capital gain tax of 20% on that particular sale. Now this is the cost of purchase adjusted to inflation. So basically if you sell for uh, uh, your, if you bought a, fl a flat for like 10 lakhs in 90s and you sell it for 50 lakhs, now you, are, uh, you have to deduct the initial cost of your flat of 10 lakhs now you'll have to pay the capital gains tax on this 40 lakhs only now once you do the sale now once you have all the documentation and now once your money is sitting in nro account what do you do next that's when you hire a chartered accountant you absolutely need a chartered accountant for this transaction especially if you want to bring money from india to the united states now chartered accountant has to provide you with a certificate which is called a 15 ca certificate now this certificate is a attestation by uh, by your ca or chartered accountant saying that this was a legal transaction and this money is legal from the proceeds of a sale of your own property it also says that this money has been acquired through the legal means and all the taxes on this um, money has been paid. So chartered accountant is actually vouching for you with this form 15CA. Now there is also a 15CB that needs to be filed in addition to 15CA and that is another additional form that your chartered accountant will help you fill as well. So this 15CA and 15CB are the first things that you need to do to get these certificates from your chartered accountant after the sale of property has completed. Now both of these forms can be filled out online. You'll get an acknowledgement and a receipt number uh, based on these submissions of these 15CA and 15CB. Now these are the certificates that you will need to take to the bank before you can withdraw that money or transfer that money to the United States. So when you go to the bank uh, where you have that NRO account, uh, where you, basically where uh, your money is sitting after the sale of the transaction, the bank will not issue or not transfer a single penny without these two certificates issued by a chartered accountant, 15CA and 15CB. Now there is another form that the bank will need you to fill which is A2 form which is again the similar version that this money was legal and brought from the legal means and it is your own money that is going to be transferred to the United States. So the bank will have you fill yet another form which is A2. Some of the banks will also ask you to do uh, or submit all the documentation of the sale. So basically title or if this property was inherited from your parents then they will need to show the deed or they will need to show uh, the will uh, of, of your parents uh, specifying that this was a legitimate transfer of inheritance to your name. And after that only then the bank will be willing to transfer your money from India to the United States. Now this can be done through wire transfer or they can issue you a bank draft. Uh, it is uh, your choice basically how you want to transfer that money. But before any kind of transfer happens, 15CA, 15CB and Form A2, all these certifications are must before the bank can transfer your money. 
Now, once the transfer has been done and now once the money is available in your US bank account, what happens next? What do you need to do? Now, so far we saw what needs to be done, what needs to be done in the India side of things. So you are complying with all the tax laws in India. Now, let's see what, what is to be done on the US side of the border. Now, when you file the tax returns, you will need to file something called 3520, the form 3520. Now, this form is typically to re uh, report a foreign transaction. Now, IRS wants you to file this uh, form 3520 if there is any transaction, foreign transaction incoming from a uh, country like India to the un United States, if the transaction amount is $100,000 or more. But regardless, even if the uh, amount is less, to cover off your basis, you want to fill out this form when you are declaring your inter income tax. Now this is now once you do this, this is whole transaction becomes legal. So you have you have fulfilled all the applications of 15C and 15CB and A2 uh, from the India perspective. You have filled, filed all the income taxes. Uh, you have paid all the income taxes on the capital gains, 20% uh, or whatever that slab may be. So you have fulfilled all your obligations on India side. And on the US side, you have also declared the, uh, this transaction by filling out uh, form 3520 and declaring a transaction that you have inherited some amount from India or you are bringing or repatriating uh, amount from your own account uh, to US account. Now, there is also another form 8938 that you will need to file for, for all the US uh, residents. So, green card holders, US citizens, uh, this 8938 form needs to be also be filled. It, it is to report the bank balances with the amounts that are transferred from your inheritance from country like India. So uh, other than form 3520, you also need to file this form 8938. So once you are done with these forms on both sides of the border in India on, and in the United States, now you have officially and fully legally transferred all your own funds from India to the United States. So I wasn't aware of this. I just went through some of the material online and found this information for myself. I'm pretty sure this was also an information that most of you are looking for, at least from the comments that I got. So if you got value out of this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to know something more about it, and if you have any more information, you can put, them, uh, put that into the comment section as well. So I hope you like the content of this video. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.